This GIF is probably the most famous image from Breaking Bad. It's also a major spoiler from late in the show, albeit one divorced from most of its context. But still, this is your chance to get out now if you don't want to be spoiled. Still here? Okay. It's a short clip of Walter White clearly horrified by something happening off screen. I won't say who, but he's watching someone die. Someone he cares about. It's an incredibly tragic moment and a low point for Walt. And even without context, his expressions wordlessly convey complete shock and terror, thanks to some wonderful facial acting by Brian Cranston. Because of how traumatizing the event is for the characters and maybe even the audience watching, naturally it's become a staple of ironic memes where all sense of dramatic weight and sincerity has been stripped away in favor of cartoon sound effects. <laughs> Breaking Bad and its spin-off show, Better Call Saul, have produced some of the most iconic images from the last decade or so of TV, with a lot of the stuff that made it into pop culture being extracted from intensely serious moments, very frequently related to the deaths of characters. And this phenomenon is not exclusive to Breaking Bad, just look at this scene from The Punisher. The thing that complicates this is that both shows are incredibly critically acclaimed, and the former is practically a household name. It's not an ironic attachment in the sense that people make fun of the show for being poorly made. So why is it such a phenomenal meme? A lot of it is simply that it's a popular show. IP is king in today's media, and the simple act of recognizing elements from our culture can be the basis for an entire joke. And while this is somewhat a criticism, I'm not immune to it. I love Breaking Bad, and I like seeing Breaking Bad memes. But more than that, there's something extremely odd about the fact that a lot of these memes are from very heavy moments. To codify these moments as reaction gifs and memes is to strip them of all meaning and have them lose their punch as resonant scenes. Maybe though, it's exactly because the show is so dark and frequently upsetting that it takes on this form over the internet. Irony detaches you from reality. It can exist as a way of coping with depressing events. Being sincere and opening yourself up to pain is hard, even if it would ultimately lead to better healing and growth. Irony is much easier. Of course, I don't think it's a death knell for the future of humanity that we make jokes about the deaths of fictional characters, but it's undoubtedly a symptom of our incredibly insincere culture. And I don't think levity or irony are inherently awful ways to cope, as long as they're only one step in the process, and don't completely halt you from actually grieving and dealing with your circumstances. Of course, it might not even be that deep, these images get passed around so much until they lose absolutely all context and meaning. And though that's a bit sad to me, maybe there's no ulterior motives. Without context, I can totally see how this becomes a solid reaction image. It's a powerful and subtle performance that can be distorted depending on the new context added. When I rewatched Breaking Bad with my partner last year, the show still had a lot of impact. But I couldn't help but be distracted by certain scenes that have taken on a life of their own online. In the back of my mind, I thought, there's the meme, even as I'm watching a character get shot in the head. When other people see these scenes, are their interpretations distorted by all the YouTube videos they've seen where Heisenberg is the number one Morbius fan? Does it become less impactful, or worse, do they think it's cliche or poorly directed or otherwise of low quality because they've grown so numb to it? I want to be emotionally affected by the art I experience, and while there's not really anything I can do about it, I can't help but be frustrated that even an iota of effectiveness has been removed from one of my favorite shows. And these shows by Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould are really powerful. Walter White is a very insidious type of person that I've been unfortunate enough to meet in my real life. A less violent and outright evil version, obviously. So the portrayal of such a complex character that feels so true to life is incredibly cathartic for me personally. And these are also just extremely thrilling and dramatic works with lots of incredible writing, acting, etc. As absurd as it might sound, these shows, well, the prequel spin-off Better Call Saul specifically, have helped me come to terms with traumatic events in my real life. It help me learn how to cope with death. Everyone grieves differently. Everyone reacts to death fictionally or otherwise differently. I've grieved by watching Better Call Saul. At some point we'll suddenly realize that we haven't thought about it at all. At this point, I'm going to pivot to explicitly spoiling a huge event from the last season of Better Call Saul. It won't ruin everything for you, but it's a great show and the last few episodes are still airing, so I'm urging you to stop here and check it out if you have any interest going in. And it's also going to get a lot heavier. There's a content warning on screen right now. In the last episode before the mid-season break, we saw a major character death. It was the most shocking death between either show, and honestly one of the most viscerally intense scenes I've seen on television. If you've seen it, it might sound a little hyperbolic. For one, children die in Breaking Bad. So then, what is it specifically about the death of Howard Hamlin that tugged on my heartstrings so much? 
you keep telling the lie that you've been telling. Though it may seem obvious saying it out loud, there's a major difference between rationally knowing something is going to happen and actually accepting that it will happen. I knew that someone was likely to die in this mid-season finale. Tension had been building for a long time, and the episode was literally titled Plan and Execution. An incredibly obvious double meaning just begging to be scrutinized. As the episode goes on, you get the sneaking suspicion that Howard will be the one to kick the bucket. I can deny the inevitable truth up until the very moment it actually occurs. Even as Lalo Salamanca puts a silencer on his pistol, the tension hasn't been released. Howard was dead as soon as Lalo entered the room, and the last minute of his life is painfully long. I'm not even thinking there's any possibility he could live anymore, but Lalo aims the pistol and fires a bullet through Howard's skull. Blood splatters on the wall, his head crashes into the coffee table and bounces off. And finally, he lands still. Jimmy and Kim immediately know what happened and what it means, but they're not allowed to think or grieve yet, and we as the audience wouldn't know for several more weeks what their fate would be. They know they killed this man, inadvertently. They didn't literally pull the trigger, but for reasons too lengthy to explain now, he would be alive if not for them. They try not to scream or cry as a man they once knew well is no longer breathing, his blood soaking into their carpet. The worst part might be that Lalo doesn't seem to care. They hold each other, praying that they're not next. It's so clear. Screw the money, you did it for fun. You get off on it. You're, you're like Leopold and Loeb, two sociopaths. All right, that's enough. Oh, you know it's true. You just have the guts to admit it. Great. Now you need to go. I'm going to make it clear to everyone. In the span of just a few years, I've had several deaths in my family. Literally too many to count. I didn't really have to deal with death at any prior point in my life. I had been to a few funerals and I had friends who lost people, but I was luckily generally unscathed and... I was always too young to really comprehend it anyway. Then, a few years ago, we had a tragic and unexpected death in the family. Not even a year later, we had another, and then another, and several more over the coming months, more or less coincidental timing-wise. We all know death is coming for us, rationally. We may even think that we understand that we and never and we know will eventually die. Some of these people had very, very long, good lives. And maybe that makes their deaths technically more predictable, but doesn't actually make it any easier. And some were really young. I know I didn't cry immediately over any of them. I didn't know how to process it, the finality of it, that I'll never speak to these people again, that the people closest to them will never speak to them again. They exist in my memories and in photos and videos we're lucky to have but they're not preserved in any meaningful way where we can actually interact with them. I do remember crying once just before. I was a little apprehensive over the idea of a month-long gap in the middle of the season, and though the final few episodes haven't released yet, I can't imagine they would have found a better place to pause. The cliffhanger it creates is compelling rather than frustrating, but even more importantly and unexpectedly, I needed time to grieve. Howard's character and actions have a degree of ambiguity to them. When he offers Jimmy a job at HHM, is it because he truly thinks it's the right choice? Or more cynically, is it because he feels guilty and wants to clear his conscience? But whether you see any of his actions as selfish or selfless, he didn't deserve to die. And his last few months, if not years of life, were hell. His death hits so hard because he truly did nothing wrong, nothing that should cost him his life at least, and we've learned about him over dozens of hours of TV. In hindsight, it should have been clear as day where he was headed as we get his personal life more filled in than ever in the episodes leading up to his demise. We see him interacting with his wife, even going to therapy. There are characters who were maybe just as, if not more, innocent than him, but none were as complex and fleshed out as Howard. I grew to really like him, and when he died, I thought about it for literal days. I thought about it almost as if he was a real person, gone from this world. It made me think about my own mortality, even. I didn't think about how he was gone from the show. I thought about how he was dead. I thought about death in real life for that long and longer, but still, the death of this fictional character occupied my brain for days. Why? I don't want to be callous in comparing these tangible, real losses with fictional ones, and I don't think I am. But is this a silly thing to get hung up on? I spend more time here talking about Breaking Bad than my own life, and that's deliberate. It's a very personal thing to talk about, and I want boundaries for myself and others, but 
how does it come across? I was a self-deprecating teenager, and when I think to myself things like, this is such a stupid thing to fixate on, this is such a stupid thing to make a video about, I have to make sure I'm not slipping back into that negative headspace. But I mean, it feels like the world gets worse pretty much every week. Every time I try to write about anything, it feels trivial. And yeah, I know why that's ridiculous. I don't grieve over crises anymore, but it's not even that I'm desensitized to it. I fixate on Howard because I can't afford to fixate on the real world violence happening anymore. The things that previously kept me up for days, I can't allow myself to truly reflect on them. In quarantine, I had a lot of free time and a lot of time to think about. I mean, do I even need to name specifics? Even if we're not on the same page, there's just so much bad shit happening in this world. I cried about I'm still thinking about it. Is it selfish to grieve for people you've never met? It's hard to admit that I try not to think about these things, but I would fall apart if I didn't. Fixating on these things isn't good for me, it's not good for anyone, and it's not going to make the world a better place. Grieving is one thing, being empathetic is one thing, but to obsess over it to the point where it's debilitating is another. You also can't allow yourself to get sucked in so deep you can't function anymore. I grieved for Howard because art is a safe, controlled place where I can feel these emotions without them overpowering me. I grieved for Howard and it helped me grieve in my real life. The world can be a scary and unfair place. And though lately I'd rather stick with more escapist art that makes me feel good, sometimes it's alright to have a safe space to feel these feelings. I worry so much about making essays this personal. I wonder if I'm processing this in the right way, as if there is such a thing, and of course I don't have all the answers. There's no easy solutions, there's no bringing these people back, there's no thesis at the end of this essay to make everything better. These are just my thoughts, and my thoughts are incomplete and messy. All there is to do is keep moving forward and try to do the best with what we have. This is what I got out of this show, and it was valuable to me. This show has never trivialized tragedy. It has made it as real and unpredictable and cruel as it needs to be, as it is in real life. It made me realize that all these things I'm feeling are okay, but eventually you have to move on. Howard didn't have to die. The show would have continued to make sense with him living. It was a deliberate choice by the writers to kill him off, but it was the right one. I don't actively seek out memes, but for whatever reason the algorithm has gotten to know that I'm a fan and pushes silly little joke videos to my front page on YouTube. I really did not think there would be edits of Howard's death, at least not so soon. But as I was finishing up the script for this video, I finally got one recommended to me. It had close to 50,000 views. There's not a single remotely funny thing to latch onto, and this video at least seems to just exist as a silly in joke with some kind of funny editing. I don't know how to feel about this, the fans trivializing these moments because that's just what they do. I feel wrong outright condemning it, I know it's all in good fun and there's many more pressing things to actually get upset about, but I hope I never forget this moment and how much it meant to me.